We don't have to tell you it's cold outside. It's enough to make even we hearty New Englanders wince and whimper. And we're not even getting the worst of it. This extreme freeze comes with a curious new term. It's not a cold snap or Arctic air or a frigid spell. It's a polar vortex. And it turns out it's not a fancy phrase someone made up. It's the real thing. With wind chills at 34 degrees below zero, it was too cold for even this polar bear, which had to be moved inside at Chicago's Lincoln Park Zoo. So cold that three Amtrak trains were frozen in place in Illinois, stranding some 500 passengers. So cold this cup of hot water instantly turned to snow. It's like a, a cool science project. The Arctic air mass known as the polar vortex is unusual for only one reason. It normally stays north in Canada, but this time the vortex dropped. Climate Central's senior science writer Andrew Friedman told NPR it's like a figure skater that gets off balance. You know, when a figure skater pulls their arms in, they spin tighter and tighter and faster and faster. But when they uh, put their arms out, they are a little bit slower and a little bit more wobbly and more prone to fall or, or stop skating at the, at the end of their routine. And what's happening now is that a piece of it is uh, down on the other side of the globe and a piece of it kind of got lopsided and came down on top of us. The polar vortex has been particularly apocalyptic in the upper Midwest. This time-lapse video over Lake Michigan shows the swirl of the vortex as it refuses to leave. The temperatures that we're talking about are deadly. Here in Boston, where it's expected to drop into the single digits tonight, people are just beginning to brace for the worst. Joining me now, as she does most Tuesdays, is WGBH News science editor Heather Goldstone, who has a Ph.D. in ocean science from MIT. Welcome back to Greater Boston. Heather. Good to be here. So we were all admitting this morning in the newsroom that we had never heard the term polar vortex, but I'm assuming Canada has since that's usually where it is. I can't vouch for every Canadian citizen, but it's certainly not a new phenomenon. And it's just for some reason that particular term, you know, as you mentioned, they've called it a bubble of Arctic air before or any number of things. And for some reason this time, polar vortex has really caught on. Yeah, it's kind of a cool term. So why, <laughs> why did it happen? And you can see this. It's so dramatic, as you can see on the graphics. So why did it happen? Why did it drop this time? Well, what happened was uh, right around the, the turn of the new year, uh, we had what was called a sudden stratospheric warming. Basically, the air in the upper atmosphere above the pole got warm. That kind of destabilized the whole circle of winds that usually holds this cold, dense air in place over the pole and let it start to drift. And so some of it has gone the other side of the world and some of it has come our way. And to make up for that, uh, as you can see in this graphic, as the, the winds around the pole weaken, the jet stream at our latitudes gets stronger, it dips down and kind of pulls it down further. And the result, if you look at a map of temperatures in the U.S. today, is that you can actually almost see the outline of the jet stream mm. with those cold temperatures just intruding right down into the, the southeast of the country. Tennessee at the same temperature as Augusta, Maine. Yeah, I heard someone earlier today say Augusta, Georgia and Augusta, Maine were actually at the same temperature, which is not your usual situation. So people all over the country were doing all kinds of experiments. And there was one guy in St. Cloud, Minnesota, who was going to test antifreeze to see how long it would take it to freeze at 20 below. Let's take a look. The antifreeze here just came out of a heated garage. It's about 40 degrees above zero. Let's see how long it takes to freeze. In about a half an hour time, it froze into this slushy, toxic mess. I found that incredible because antifreeze is supposed to be the it's thing. It's supposed you to be doing its job. <laughs> <laughs> it was one thing for the water to freeze instantaneously, but I was shocked that the antifreeze. Yeah, well, and, you know, these extreme cold temperatures can cause problems with all sorts of things. I mean, that's why... Folks in the Midwest have typically had battery warmers, but everything, the, the LCD screen on your uh, computer can start to have problems when you start to get into these really extreme temperatures and, and even things like fuel. So uh, the comedian Jon Stewart had, had a little riff last night, you know, basically making fun of skeptics uh, of global warming, saying just one incident doesn't make a difference. So let's see what he had to say. Apparently, decades of peer-reviewed scientific study can be, like a ficus plant, destroyed in one cold weekend. <laughs> Looks to me like we're looking at global cooling 
Forget this global warming. We're having a hard time understanding how global warming alarmists are still trying to push their radical position. Global warming, a phrase we're all familiar with. I think it's going to die this year, given the kind of incredible cold weather we've had this weekend. See, they were all global warmer deniers, and they're saying this cold snap proves that there's no such thing as global warming. Interestingly, it could be the exact opposite. So nobody's saying that this particular pattern of weather right now is being caused by global warming, but actually these kinds of events are expected to get more uh, frequent as a result of climate change. That's uh, something that, you know, you like the polar vortex, well, there's the polar paradox or the Arctic paradox uh, to go with it, which basically means that the Arctic is warming twice as fast as the rest of uh, the world, and that's setting off some of these uh, strange weather patterns where we're actually getting the cold air instead of the Arctic. All right, Heather Goldstone, thanks so much. My pleasure.